Kara Zorel escapes the dying planet of Krypton. She is delayed on her way to Earth. When she gets here 24 years later, she becomes Earth's newest hero, Supergirl. Welcome to the Krypton Report, a Supergirl podcast brought to you by Southgate Media. I am your host, Tyler Patrick, and you can find me at JTY Patrick on Twitter. So let's get started on what's going on today in the world of the Kryptonians. I am one of your co-hosts, Tyler, and with me today as my other co-host is Mr. Chris Johnson. Oh, hey. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for being on the cast. Glad to be here, man. Glad to be here. So this is our pilot cast for a show that we're working on, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to build up hype and interest in the upcoming CW Supergirl TV series, as well as touch on the proposed sci-fi TV series of Krypton. So first of all, today, this is our first show. We're figuring everything out. We gotta, we've been planning out what we actually want to do, bringing you more Supergirl information each week. So we're just going to talk about so far what the production of the Supergirl show has been, because we know they've gone into casting. So first of all, let's talk about casting. The first person that we heard rumors that was being cast was Claire Holt. Am I saying that right? Try yes, to The girl that was on The Vampire Diaries as one of the originals whose name escapes me right now. Oh, well. But my thought is, she's not a horrible actress. She would be okay. I mean, I think she looks, I think she looks the role. The problem is, is we've not had a lot of solid Supergirl media. And that, that's correct. And, you know, before we jump too far ahead, the show is Supergirl, but in some ways I think it's going to be more Superwoman without the woman part because they don't seem to be really going <laughs> for a girl vibe they're not going for that 17 and underage so i think that's an interesting thing to point out the second actress that we've heard is Gemma atkinson now her i'm not familiar with at all uh but i don't think anybody is if we're being completely honest (laughs) she's she's still kind of an unknown um and that's good i think unknowns always have a way of working well when it comes to the superhero genre unless you're an amazing actor that can really especially when it comes to a cw series well, because I mean, this, this, you know, in all truth, this is a C-D- CBS, but with a CW flair? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Gemma Atkinson, uh, Gemma Louise Atkinson, she's an English actress, uh, and a television personality. She's also a glamour lingerie model, so you can expect that's probably gonna float around within the costuming if she gets rolled. Um, she's best known for her role in Hollyoaks, acting as the role of Lisa Hunter. She also, uh, was in the horror film Devil's Past, or Devil's Past, sorry about that, and more recently a movie called 13 Hours. Hmm, I'm going to have to yeah. check something of those out. I usually do like to try to find, when I when I know that people are getting cast for characters that I care about, I try to find something they've done and watch to kind of see, like I remember when Christian Bale got announced as Batman, one of the first movies I watched was actually Equilibrium. It wasn't movie. It wasn't Newsies, no, and it wasn't The Machinist. Uh, it was it was Equilibrium because I you didn't, felt you didn't want to see your Batman as as a xylophone rib. Well, <laughs> I wanted to see something a little bit more action based than just a guy slowly yeah. die. Um, Devil's Pass was good. It's I can't remember her in it though. That's the problem, and, and that's the thing. I know she was one of the, the main actresses, but really, it's just. It was kind of one of those uh, foreign B-rate English horror films, so it's not like something to take too seriously. And I don't know. I'm just I'm not sure, honestly, how I feel about Supergirl just yet because again, we haven't heard too much, especially with the announcement back in December that CBS was given the series commitment to. Yeah, I mean, the only thing we've heard come out is we knew that they were casting. We've heard these two actresses' name thrown around. They were casting for her. Sp- stepsister, adoptive sister character. Yeah. Um, I've heard, Catherine, that they're going to do a Jimmy Olsen character. He's, he's going to be more of a buffer jock-esque, I guess. Jimmy Olsen, not as much as the wimpy nerd, but this is all hearsay because we haven't yeah. heard anything more. The the thing that's ex- that excites me about it is uh, Greg Berlanti, or how do you say it? Oh, Berlanti. Ber- yeah, we're getting to that. We're getting well, to I'm just Yeah, I'm just teasing, but I'm just... The, the fact that, you know, you have somebody who's willing to produce this and back it, 
that has solid ground in other lore that's doing extremely well. Exactly. And that's going to bring us to our next point about the Supergirl show. Is, yes, it's on CBS, and I don't know how everything works, but I know that CBS is owned by Warner Brothers, or they have a... They have an affiliate with. So, I know that... There has been talk that it, with this that it will cross to the Flash Arrow universe. So that's what be our cool. next big segment is, the Flash Arrow and Supergirl. And the nice thing is, if they're able to do that, at least they'll be able to achieve what Gotham wasn't able to with potential crossover. <laughs> Gotham is in its own pocket universe. Uh, Gotham. Um, now, the thing for me is, I, I keep looking back at people who have played Supergirl in the past, and all, although I know she's way too old to play the role now, I still wish we could see Nicole Tom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because she was, I mean, she was the voice for all of us growing up. She is the voice. See, you know, as a kid, like, it was Supergirl, cause I'm a huge Superman fan, I love the legacy story and all that. Mm-hmm. I never really watched the Supergirl movie. But for the podcast, we'll be getting there, fans. Yeah. Um, You're in for a hoot. It's been a long time. I've seen it. It's just been a long time. So bad. Um, but my thing is, I know, like, I watched on the animated, the Bruce Timm versions, mm-hmm. like you were saying. We also had in Smallville, Laura Vandervoot. Who God, did a, she's gorgeous, yeah. Who did a good job of the Kara character they gave her. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about that later in, in the cast, too, as we break down more of the character and all the portrayal. Portrayals? <laughs> Portrayals? She's been, she's been portrayed. portrayed. <laughs> Portrayals of Kara. Yeah. But my thing is with this universe is I think we're going to get a character. Now, they haven't said for sure that she's going to go by the Laura Danvers. So that's the rumor, um, which I'm almost I'm almost okay with. I would love to see it as Linda, the Matrix Linda Danvers. Is that what it was? I can't yeah. remember all of it. Um, you know what? There's, there's too much to try to remember it. Uh, Supergirl was one of those those things that wasn't hastily thrown together, but once they did it, they wanted to do like a million different variations of it because it, it reached that demographic of, of younger girls looking for empowerment. And I really think that's the character we're missing. Yes. And I think that, you know, the Hunger Games has shown that people like strong female characters and it gives girls someone to look up to and... With all the comics that we have and characters, we haven't seen a female character really rise. We get yeah. somewhat with Black Widow, a strong female. Yeah. But I don't think she's the kind of character that you want your daughter to aspire to be. No. And well, the other thing is, especially like if even if we're focusing just on like the television series, you don't want. I don't think you want your influence to be Canary or Black Canary from Arrow. Right. I mean, there there's really solid foundation of those women being really strong, but you know. It all comes from random torture and alcoholism. And the thing is, the thing I've always found interesting about Supergirl is she's just born as Supergirl. Right. And see, I saw something the other day that someone pointed out about Superman Mm -hmm. was Batman does things out of a tragic past that propelled him to be Batman. Yeah. And though you could say Superman's planet's destruction, as with Supergirl's, was something of a tragedy, but mm-hmm. they didn't learn, he didn't learn about it till later, but Superman does what he does because it's the right thing to do. Right. Not because of any sense of, I have to overcome this tragedy. He has, I have these abilities, I should use those to help others. And I think what we're going to see with Supergirl, because yeah. of the way it's being done, is we're going to see an amalgam of Supergirl and Superman. Yes. Because I really believe the story of Supergirl is not going to touch kal it's not going to be about Superman, because her story is so much tied to his. Yeah. I believe that the Supergirl we're going to get on TV is going to be, in a sense, she's going to replace the Superman as character. Yeah, plus, you know, the nice thing is, if we if we get this and it works well, uh, I'm just looking at the potential here on, on the Supergirl wiki page, uh, the enemies that we're going to see faced are fantastic. I mean, we've got Black Flame, Black Star, Blythe, Bl- uh, Buzz, Carnivore. The Council, Decay, The Gang, Leslalar, Lilith, Matrix Prime, which is my favorite uh, powerful robot built by the Council that acts as their agent. It's kind of like a, a golem character. It's I'd even, darn near impossible to whoop. See, I'd even like to see her take on... I always thought Parasite was an underrated character. Yeah. The fact that, you know, he fed off the Kryptonian power and loved it. I think that's something yep. we could see adapted, especially with the people who are behind Arrow and Flash. 
Greg Perlenti, Andrew Kreisberg. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm forgetting anyone's name off the top of my head, I apologize. But with them behind it, I think we're going to see a really unique portrayal of Supergirl. And my mind's open to it because I think it'll be a character that'll be neat to see on TV. That and it opens us further into the DC Universe to allow us to see Superwoman and, you know, other characters that are going to, that could unfold with it. Because we know, we know that DC is not going to put Batman or Superman or Wonder Woman on TV. No. Those are going to the films. But I will tell you, this, the Superwoman legacy in Supergirl is a possibility because they were, for the first half of that series, um, in 2009, they were mortal enemies. A lot of fight in that, which could be interesting. I don't know. We'll see, man. It's a really unique way to build a second DC universe. Because I mean, we've already mm-hmm. heard the arguments and talked about, and I'm sure listeners out there, you might recognize me from being on Before the Bat, the Gotham podcast, where I do with Phil and Kelly. And you might also recognize me from the other Southgate Media podcast of the Flash Arrow Hour with Phil and Zach. And we've discussed the fact that right now in that shared universe, Green Arrow who's one of my favorite characters, is representing a pseudo-Batman. Yeah. And while The Flash is representing a pseudo-Superman. I could see that, yeah. And now if we bring in Supergirl, you would think she would represent Superman, but is she representing more the third part of the Trinity being Wonder Woman? So we have kind of this television Justice League uh, that we're going to see. And I'm okay with that because I feel like if you didn't do Supergirl in this way, we might never get to see her live action character. Yeah, and 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 I hope tangent talking about those those secondary characters getting their chance um, on the CW series, the CBS series is. Um, I'm hoping with if this gets really successful, that eventually we'll see Nightwing. Nightwing could then take over our our version of of Batman. See, the one thing is like with Nightwing, if they did a Nightwing show, and I know it's been proposed for the team for a Teen Titans. On TNT, that's a yeah. team mouthful. And <laughs> Phil's actually looking at launching his own cast about that. Is can you do a good Nightwing without having Batman? I think you can. I, I think the the essence of Batman can always be in the background, but it doesn't have to be a salt presence. Right, and that's if they acknowledge that he is a protege of Batman. There's some sort of allusion to that. I'm okay with, but I don't need to see Batman. But I don't need to see Nightwing as if he never was Robin. As long as we don't bring in Blue Beetle, I don't care. Uh, Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle. So, I, now, this is going to be the next question, because obviously we don't know where this is going to start. Is this going to be an origin story of Supergirl, or are we jumping into something else? Is this going to be a completely different story that we've never heard? See, and that's where I think that, like I was talking about that amalgamized Supergirls, where we're going to get essences of Superman's story yeah. and essences of Supergirl's story. But I wonder if it's it's supposed to connect to the Flash Arrowverse. Mm-hmm. If there'll be hints about where she's been, what she's been doing, while the events of Flash and Arrow have been going on. Because yeah. if she's going to be a little older and more of a, a woman than just a teenage girl... Why hasn't she interacted with them before? Like, I'm, I'm very excited. Well, that and why haven't why haven't they mentioned the Supergirl character? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm thinking it would be neat as if we have something maybe where the show, much like the way Arrow's done with flashbacks, is we yeah. have a sense of Supergirl. I don't want to call her Kara. Mm-hmm. I don't want to call her uh, Linda or anything like that because we don't know what she'll be called. But... If we have this sense of maybe the first season's about her stepping out as Supergirl, stepping up right off the bat, and then we learn everything else in flashbacks. Yeah. Um, well, the nice thing is, I, I see that happening just because of who's writing it. Um, Allison Beth Adler, who is one of the head writers on Flash, and Greg Berlanti, who wrote Arrow, are both teaming together to write this script. And that's why I'm, I think I'm really excited with is a lot of people had problems with the way Arrow started. But I feel like Arrow was an origin story more so than a lot of the other origin stories yeah. that we've gotten. I mean, it took the character who is more of a vigilante, who is more mm-hmm. human, and who has more of that flexible moral standard than any other, I think, DC character, and brought him to be the hero that they they have now. And I like that. And I was open to the different interpretation mm-hmm. so that I'm not watching a series or a show where I have no surprises because... I know too much about the character. I I personally like the way that they wrote the first 
two seasons of Arrow because they wrote them with everything previously in mind, which which to me leads me to believe that they know where they want it to go. They're confident in where it's going to go. They have plans. They have good story backing. And these are two large names in the in the comic folklore world. And I don't think they're going to idly just walk into Supergirl. I, I have a feeling that this has been planned for a really long time. It's just like when they talked about Flash. Is when they, they did the first season of Arrow, they had an idea of doing Flash. Yeah. And that's why you know, we got to see Barry appear in season two of yep. Arrow. Yep. And so I feel like I have faith in them doing Supergirl. I have an open mind to a different interpretation and different style because I feel like it's a character that we need to see. Yeah. And that will give us some sort of a super, my, a Kryptonian on TV, as well as we'll have our Kryptonian yeah. in the films. My only concern, and it's and it's a little one, is um, with this being a CBS uh, uh, ownership, I'm not 100% sure of CBS's ability to make a superhero TV show. Like, CW is killing it. Well, see, you know, CW Fox is doing okay. We know that Fox, when it comes to fanboy, fangirl yeah. television series, is they're not the best. So I was weary when Gotham premiered on Fox. Yeah. Uh, NBC doing Constantine. I like the show, but I'm still kind of... I feel like NBC can get away with it, though, because they're already like a darker network. And I agree with you that, because they did yeah. they, they did do Graham, Hannibal, yeah. um, and even Dracula, which was a good show. For one season. For one season. <laughs> The, no, I, my, again, my, my only fear is, um, you know, CBS, with CBS, it's more of a lighthearted network. Not that I want a dark Supergirl story. I don't need that. No, but I, it doesn't need to be. Dark. I don't need it to be 1950s camp either. I need, I want Supergirl to be in the vein of what The Flash is. I think yeah. The Flash is a very fun. Flash is a really well balanced show. And that's what I think Supergirl needs to be. Yeah. And I don't want a teen drama. So I'm thinking maybe with it being on CBS, we might see less of the teeny bop teen drama. Yeah. And, you know, you think about CBS has done this, the CSI shows, which are a little bit darker shows. Um, so, I don't know, I'm, I'm curious to see because they, this is new territory for them as a network. Well, and the interesting thing is, although a lot of nerds will tell you the Big Bang Theory is a joke uh, against nerds, it's not, in my opinion. Oh, I love that show. Um, but... They brought a lot of of this of these lores to light. They talk about these characters openly all the time. So I, I feel like there's a backing and an audience for this as well. I, I'm just taking a look at the normal mainstay here of what's really popular on CBS. I'll give you the first like six here. Uh, like you said, NCIS is big right now. Uh, big Bang Theory's big. Madam Secretary, The Good Wife, and then and I forgot about this. Um, Elementary. The uh, Sherlock Holmes with which, Lucy Liu, which is a great which job. is which is a really different take on that story, but it's really good. So I, I, you know, my fear maybe is just overdone at this point, and my I, I should state I should state this. My main concern, honestly, Tyler, mm-hmm. is getting the woman of the right age and or uh, you know somebody who can actually play Supergirl. Like like if we had an older Supergirl. And then they did flashbacks with somebody younger and not her. I might be okay with that. But then again, it's that's tricky to do. It's one of those things. I don't. I don't want to see Teeny Bopper Supergirl unless that's where they're going with it. Yeah, but I think with not having Superman, we could see a more established Supergirl. And I think that depending on the actress they choose will really help t- fill in the time. But I want much like my issue with Gail Godot as well as. Wonder Woman, where mm-hmm. I feel like physically she doesn't look like an Amazon warrior. She's gotten a lot thicker, though. Yeah, well, we can talk about that more later. <laughs> but I still think she has such a thin, frail frame. Yeah. I want someone who, like, okay, I've said this before on Channel 52 podcast I've done with Lilith on the Southgate Network. If you take Henry Cavill and you tell him he has to buff up and look ripped to be Superman, mm-hmm. I want the same out of Supergirl and Wonder Woman because I want them to look the part. I want them to look like they can fight. I don't want Supermodel. I want Supergirl. I don't want, yeah. you know, so. So I'm looking at a picture of Claire Holt at the moment, and she right now is in the floor running. They are, they are saying that there's um, negotiations with her on a contract. 
she's she's young looking, but I, I'm still seeing like a like a 27, 28 year old Supergirl. And like I said, if that's where they want to go with it, mm-hmm. if they can they can make me believe it, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, but my thing is, if she's in contract, but we don't know what character. Because yeah, they are casting, I know, a character to be the sister. Right. So, um, and, you know, which, again, we're going back to, because all of this is under rumor at the moment, which vein of Supergirl are we on? Right. And that's what I'm, I think we're going to see some sort of amalgam. And that's one thing we're going to say for another episode of the cast here is we'll break down the different variations and the different origins of Supergirl, the different names and everything that she's done, so that we can kind of flesh out and as we look for clues together and figure out which take they might be going after. Before we wrap this, I'm, I'm looking, like I said, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at International Business Times. They're a, they're a, a good solid source for these rumors about these shows, and uh, they're talking about Claire Holt. There's only one comment in the sections from a guy named Charlie, and he says, "No, she's a butterface." And I'm looking at Charlie, and I'm like, uh, I wouldn't say that, bud. <laughs> she has a unique look to her face. She does, but she's, you know what, she's blonde, she's pretty, she's younger. I, she's fit to look She's good. fit, and the other thing is, my biggest thing is, can she play the role? And if she can play it, God help her. I've, I mean, I've watched, you know, some of her episodes on The Vampire Diaries when yeah. I've watched it with my wife. And I know that she can act, and she's been more of a darker character on that mm-hmm. show. I think she could do it. It's kind of like... I think she can do it, but is she who I would pick? Yeah. Well, and, and my and my final note on it is this. You know, if she's a CW forerunner, that means she has good backing from the company that's wanting to produce this, good backing from the people that's probably seen her and met her. You know, they've not steered us wrong with the other two shows. So let's let them have it. Exactly. You know, and if you go back and you look, I mean, the CW, WB at the time have a history of, Actors who have done shows and stuff with them Mm -hmm. getting parts in their other shows and leading to being parts. I mean, did you know that originally, if Tom Welling hadn't signed on to be Superman in Smallville, the number two was Jensen Ackles. I could have. And then Tom Welling did it, then Jensen appeared in season four. Yeah. And then led Supernatural. Yeah. So another, and same with, you know, Jared was on Gilmore Girls on the WB that went on to be on Supernatural. Yep. And there's been a lot of people in and out of those shows. So. The network has its history with its casting. So yes, it does. we'll see and see what you think, constant listener out there, of the new Last Daughter of Krypton, the Supergirl Krypton podcast. I am your co-host, Tyler, and today with me is Mr. Chris Johnson. What up? You can find me on Facebook and Twitter. The Twitter handle is at JTYPatrick. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Doctor Who Fan 1986. So if you have any questions, comments, just feel free to hit us up. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Krypton Report, the Supergirl podcast. Hit us up on Twitter at Krypton Report. Leave us a review on iTunes and let you know what you think, how the show can be better, your thoughts on Supergirl, and anything else you feel like chatting about. And I'll catch you next week.